you once said, when I first got to the sport, I was like, I've got to do everything I'm told, and now I don't do a lot of what I'm told. I think you were uh, poolside in Thailand, you, you yeah. said, when contemplating the, the switch, and that was when you ultimately decided to make the move from McLaren to Mercedes. Yeah. What was it, poolside, that you thought about that made you decide to finally make the jump? I, I kind of relate it to living at home. You know, when you first move out and get your own apartment and you take on those responsibilities on your own, that first step of independence. And I was in a team where I was very much part of the family, you know, they were protecting me in all sorts of ways and also controlling in a lot of ways. And to make a decision myself, no one influenced my decision to move. Uh, so I did all my due diligence myself and then came to the conclusion that this was a move for me. Whilst everyone, everyone said it was the worst thing that could die, worst decision, I've ruined my career, blah, blah, blah. And now we've won two world championships. But um, so it's, it's quite satisfying in that respect. I, what I had to do is really, I made notes, the pros and cons of, of my options that I had. And there were good bits and bad bits about either way, you know. Staying at McLaren, I thought that, you know, geez, I'm gonna, the car that I've helped build and grow to where we are now, most you, likely. You've been there since you were a teenager. Yeah, and we'd finally, we just missed out in 2012 World Championship. And with improved reliability, maybe we'd had a chance of winning the championship in 2013. So I was like, I'd, I could sacrifice that. I don't want to sacrifice the short term for the long term goal. And that's coming to this team, for example, that was like fifth best at the time and help them grow to being the best. And, um, but when I was sitting looking, I was in Thailand and I was on the, by the pool and it was the heat at the moment. I had to make the decision because, you know, the slots available, McLaren was pushing me, Mercedes was pushing me for an answer. And I remember just sitting there and for some reason I just came to a really peaceful moment. I was looking over the sea, the sun, sun was setting. There was these really beautiful like little islands in the distance. And it just came to me. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. And there was no nervousness about it. There was no, uh, I'm in an iron. It would just became clear. And so I made a decision called up the bosses and had to tell them, which was the hardest thing to do. What did you say? Oh, it was, it was horrible, you know, because as I said, I was signed when I was 13, so I'd known Martin and Ron since I was 13, so I have to call them and say, I'm leaving, was, was difficult, especially when you could hear their voice, and because naturally it's painful for them to hear that, you know, someone they've been with for so long, helped nurtured, helped get to Formula One. It's almost for sure a feeling of betrayal, but I think they understood that what I needed to do for me as a man. And um, I think they respected that. How did you explain it? Firstly, I started out just saying, this has been an incredible journey. Firstly, I want you to know how, how grateful I am for everything you've done to help me get be where I am today. And um, I think, honestly, for me, the next step in my life is to take this next step of independence, to go to a team, to challenge, to take everything I've learned from you guys and, and in this experience and take it to a new team. And, see if I can drive another car, see if I can turn another, world, uh, another car into a world championship winning car with a team. And I think they understand, you know, naturally I think at the beginning they perhaps didn't fully understand it, but I think, um, I think afterwards, and then now for example when I speak to them, I think they understand. And to, to come here with no one knowing you, you have to put your skills to the test. You, have, you know, you have to build new relationships. Um, you have to be able to extract the most from a new car, from a new engineers and all that kind of stuff. That's been a great step in, in really finding um, just how good I am, just not going out and driving a car. It's the stuff outside, which is really, I think, which really kind of molds and shapes a world champion. For more clips from this interview, visit GrahamBensinger.com.